All right, guys, Mike here with Stone Coat Countertops. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a really neat sample, and this sample is actually for a customer, and this is going to be white with pearl metallic mixed into our clear Stone Coat Countertop epoxy. Then we're going to do a blue vein through it with just a hint of red. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of black, we're going to just fog a little corner on and hit it with some isopropyl alcohol to give it a granified rock effect just on that one spot. So that's our plan and we'll see how it goes right now. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our uh, ultra white, just our pure white metallic powder. This is enough to do a two gallon kit so I'm just going to use just a little bit in here. So Here's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take just a little bit of that and then I'm going to mix it up by hand here. Now you could take this and separate some of this material, but I'll show you just how versatile uh, Stone Coat Countertop products are. It's really cool what this stuff can do. When you're mixing in your powders, it doesn't require a lot of mixing. It, uh, it, really, it really just mixes very, very easily. But you want to have the, the material mixed first with part A and part B. Get that mixed. If you haven't seen how to mix that, watch our video on how to mix Stone Coat Countertop material. That's real important. If you do mix it how we teach, you won't get uh, irregularities in the mix. Okay, so now we got that white mixed in here. Do you, do you wanna bring that camera close? What we're gonna do in this video is we're actually gonna bring the camera right up here and show you what we're doing on top of this. Okay, so what we have here is we have that white that's mixed right into our material. What I'm gonna do with that white is I'm just gonna pour some out right there and watch what we can do here. I'm gonna take our trowel. This is a 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. We've used it over and over again, and when we're done, we lay it flat so all the teeth let the drips run down and it's just reusable. So I just use that to uh, spread our material. Let me pour a little bit more out there. You can see just how easy this wants to flow. So I'm just gonna bring it up to the edges because you don't want to scoop all your stuff right off the edge to get go. You want to use the mass of material just to spread it out over your sample. I just mixed up um, about 24 ounces because I'm going to make a couple of samples. But uh, our material goes about 40, maybe 50 square feet if you're pushing it. Uh, 40 to 50 square feet per gallon per coat on your material. Okay, so I got just our white on there, and now I'm gonna mix in some pearl. And some pearl will add a little bit different color. Okay, so now this. we're just adding pearl. And the reason we're doing this is we're gonna have just little subtle differences in the two whites. It's gonna be a white on white there, but the pearl's gonna add a little bit of color uh, to the material. I'm just mixing that up with a paint stick. You can actually see how much that's changed the color. So there's your pearl. Now when I drizzle it on here, you'll see the differences between our pearl and our white. So there's our differences there. And I'm just drizzling it on in, in like a random fashion. And then I'm going to chop these together. Okay, so now we're going to take our brush. This is the kind of brush that we like to use. Um, it's a Wooster shortcut. Uh, this is good because it, it uh, it's not like a chip brush. A chip brush, they're cheaper, but they lose their bristles much easier than um, one of these little brushes do. So what we do beforehand is we just de-shed this brush, just pull it with our hands, make sure there's nothing coming out. Now I'm going to prime that brush. I'm just going to dip it in my material a little bit just like that, so I'm not pulling all my material off. And now I'm just gonna quickly chop this. And that's gonna pull the material up and mix it with that white. So the white and pearl are just gonna subtly mix there and just turn it into a piece of marble. Now I'm just gonna brush those edges, just like that, real easy, no big deal. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, just move this around a little bit brush that I don't want to get my brush on top to mess up that marbling. But now look at that. <laughs> I 
I love how that looks already. I mean, this here is just uh, a beautiful look. Beautiful, just elegant. Try to get a piece of stone to look like that. I mean, goodness, that was just, so that was just a piece of MDF that we had done a white base color with paint and primer in one. And then we did clear stone coat countertop epoxy mixed with our white metallic powder. And then we did pearl metallic powder drizzled on and chopped it with a brush. And that's the look you get. That's really cool. So now we're gonna add our blue veins. Um, so we'll start with that. Well, what I like to do to get a base for my veins is I'm actually going to use a little bit of our blue base color. And this, uh, this is, uh, we call it a base color, um, but really what it is, it's a base tint. It's a tint concentrate. You need very little to turn this blue. And so we're gonna just use a little bit of this base color. If you're gonna do it, this is enough to tint a full two gallons. So if you're gonna do just a little bit, you gotta adjust for that. Don't put this whole thing in there. You'll, you'll turn the whole thing dark blue, really. Okay, so when I'm gonna take this pearl, I may wanna use this later. Uh, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here so that I can, now you don't wanna leave things in the cup too long. I just put a little bit of that in there, um, but I know how long I'm gonna be working, so I've got a little experience, but you really wanna get things. Okay, there's our blue base color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just, just a little bit. That's probably plenty right there. You didn't have very much epoxy in it to start, so that's why you didn't need very much. No, epoxy. exactly, exactly. So now I'm, I'm going to just mix that pearl and that blue, and it will instantly become like a blue metallic, which is really pretty. See that color? Wow. Now we're just going to put a vein. Now, usually on a sample, I'll put the vein kind of centered, but let's, let's do it just, just a little bit diagonal here. Just gonna go right here. And go all the way over the edge and down the edge. And you see how I just kind of let it come off that I'm not quite dragging it through. I'm just letting it drizzle on there. And that looks really cool. Wow, that looks cool already. All right. Now I'm going to add some um, blue spray paints. So here's a uh, Seaside. These are the kind of spray paints we like to use, Rust-Oleum 2X. Uh, this just works really good in there. Um, if you can get it in gloss in your color, you like get it gloss. If it's satin, satin will work too, but we like to get gloss if you can. Some colors just don't come in gloss. Okay, so I just sprayed our paint stick, and now I'm just going to just go through that blue that we poured on there and just kind of mix the two together. Okay, there's that. Let's get our next blue. This is gonna be, uh, where's our other blue at? That's navy. Okay, cool. I think, look at them, look at it, just make sure. Yeah, here's navy blue, right here. Watch how neat that is. So I'm just dragging the two colors together. Now I'm going to grab um, a little bit of white and a little bit of black and put white and black in there. Closest to you. Right here. There's... Nope. Okay. I think. So here's our white. We like to get the white in the same brand there. Drag some white through that blue. Now I'll get some black. Oh, that's navy blue again. Oh, here's our black right here. Now, in a lot of respects, little samples are sometimes harder to do than the, uh, see, that's too much black. I'm going to drag some of that out right now. It's kind of making our vein too dark. See, I don't like that too much, so we'll, we'll get some of that out. 
we'll just move that around a little bit and we'll add some more blues because I really liked how those blues were just really concentrated let's uh, grab a little bit more of our blue here just layer it right in there there we go now we're just gonna grab some more of that seaside and that's how you learn you know you just see what you like but see now that blacks a deep undertone so looking back at this I could have put black down first and then my brighter colors on top see I, I really like that bright color so let's put more of that in there Oh, there we go bring some of that over here now um, I think we're just gonna fog a little bit of our black I gotta get this little thing out here okay what do you want here I want you to put a little bit more navy in there. Okay, navy. Here we go. Just kind of got washed out. Let's put Okay, just put a little bit of navy right through the center there. Oh, good idea. That looks good. Yes. Yes. Much better. Now, our customer wants a hint of red. Just a hint of red. Now, if I was going to do this, um, I would normally use red spray paint to put a little hint of red, but I don't have any red spray paint, but I do have some of our red base color. Hold on. Wow, this looks amazing. So cool how it just naturally marbles together. And that's before I torch it. Yeah, that is amazing. That looks really cool. I just want to show our blue fans. <laughs> that's what it looks like before. <laughs> so here's our red base color. We're going to add just a touch of red in here. Just a touch. You're going to put Actually, what I'm going to do, cup? because I just need a little bit, is that, yeah, I'll get my other Dixie cup here. Put a little bit of metallic in there. This is just our white base. We're gonna just get a little bit of our red here, just a touch. That's all I need. Mix that of course, up. when you're using your bigger kitchens, bathroom vanities, you're gonna use more, but this is just because we're only doing this tiny sample. Now, when you take a red, Wow, look and at that. Just give it a second. It's going to start melding together. That is really cool. So that's red mixed with pearl and white, so that's why it's toned it down, but I think it makes it look more natural that way, too. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to fog a little bit of black on there, just on a corner, and uh, we've got to find our black. Okay, here's our black. We're going to just fog a corner, and then we're going to hit it with some isopropyl alcohol. Hold on, let me back up so we can see how well, far we're going. I'm going to probably do are. just this corner right here. I'm just going to just trick that out just a little bit. So I'm going to start away from it and come into it. There we go. Now, I'm going to hit that with some isopropyl alcohol. And this just has a little bit of blue blue earth in it. We'll just hit that right now. Ready? Hold on. Okay. Let me just. There we go. Now you can see that alcohol has hit our vein here, and it hit the top, and it really granifies it right there. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna hit a little bit more alcohol in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our brush, clean our brush off a little bit, and I'm going to add just a little bit more pearl on top of this and just chop a little bit more in just to cover up some of those alcohol drips there. I'll do that same thing here. And I won't mess up our black too much, just kind of integrate the two where it'll kind of meld in. Oh, that's going to look good. Now I'm going to hit it with my torch. So you can see here where these divots are. If you don't like these divots, you just kind of hit them with your finger. That's what the that's what the alcohol will create, but you can just touch them. And it looks little little cool. We'll leave some of them in there. But now, let's hit it with our torch. 
Okay, you ready? No, nope, hold on. So I want you to show on camera how this is going to move. Okay. So I'm going to just fade this vein out a little bit here. I'm going to turn it from going in. I'm going to just fade it out to the left a little bit. beautiful so you see some of these flakes in the black I'm just gonna touch some of this with my finger just to push some of those down some of them look just a little bit more like like uh, flakes than they do yeah this is this is good yeah that looks good so I do a little finger paint when I'm doing this stuff and and that helps but that looks like a piece of natural stone because you got some, some differences. You could add more black over here and do the same thing and keep those white undertones and stuff. But this is, a, oh, see this? This is a good example of a big divot. This is caused by the alcohol. This is why we do two coats. We do a, a decorative coat and a flood. But just to stop that, you just break the surface tension and that'll flow back out. All right, hope you enjoyed this video on how to do a pearl white and a brilliant white uh, top with a vein going through it and some black uh, uh, hit with a little bit of alcohol. And then uh, just this, this is a really beautiful sample. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope, uh, hope this helps you create what you're looking for and uh, have a great time doing stove coat countertops. Thank you for all the pictures that our customers are sending us. Please continue to do so and give us your feedback in the comments below. And, if you haven't done so, please subscribe and like our, uh, our, our uh, video here. It really helps us get higher in the queue and, and helps us get known. Share this with your friends. We'll see you soon at StoneCoatCountertops.com.